Okay, welcome uh, to our home. This is the University of Kentucky Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. My name is Craig Carter. I'm the director of the laboratory going back to 2007. And uh, we're really very proud of our facilities and, uh, and are happy you're here today to, to learn a little more about what we do. We're not really much different than a veterinary practice. The only difference is that our patients are out in the field and they're, and they're in their homes where they live, whether they're companion animals or food animals or zoo animals. We, we pretty much do it all, wildlife. The reason we're here is because a veterinary practice cannot possibly afford not only the equipment but the expertise to do a lot of the diagnostic, uh, advanced diagnostic testing that, that we, we do here in this laboratory. So we basically have three clinical missions. Uh, our first clinical mission is work, working with animals that are, are what we call morbid or, or, uh, or mortality where we have death. So we, we work trying to sustain the health of animals that are, that are still with us, still healthy out there, be they uh, small animals or large animals. And uh, then we, we also, whenever an animal dies, uh, it's very important to get, get a definitive diagnosis so that any other animals that that animal or animals uh, were exposed to, uh, we know, uh, get the diagnosis and then the veterinarians out in the field can then administer the proper treatment and as fast as possible. And that's, that is what, what going to give us the best outcome uh, for, for animal health. So that, that's our number one mission. Our second big mission is what we call regulatory diagnostic veterinary medicine. Uh, you might imagine, you know, a lot of people don't think about it, but animals move and travel a lot. And especially here in the bluegrass where we have the signature horse industry, some of these animals do more frequent flyer miles than, than people. And so, but in order for animals to move, uh, certain diagnostic tests must be uh, run and reported properly on, on special forms to make sure that those animals are not gonna take a disease from here uh, out in, you know, either into the state, uh, interstate, nationally, or internationally. And every country has their own prescription of tests that, that they require in order to have animals uh, come, come, into their, uh, come into their country or in every state has their own. The state veterinarian, of course, uh, is, is the one that, uh, that manages most of that. Uh, we, we service over 3,000 clinics and hospitals uh, around Kentucky and around the country. Uh, we also work with federal and state uh, agencies, uh, we do work for zoos and, and beyond. So that's, that's our regulatory mission. Our third main mission is our public health mission. Again, not something that people think of, but now there's a new, a new philosophy of health coming out. Uh, and actually there's been a, a new bill introduced by two veterinarians in Congress called the, the One Health Act. And that is where we, we bring together the expertise of all allied health professions. So we have what, what happens is we have veterinary medicine, working with human medicine, working with pharmacists, working with environmentalists, scientists. And uh, the whole concept is that working together, we can do a better job than, than just working in our own silos. And uh, so we work very closely with the Kentucky Department of Health uh, we, we are the only, uh, a veterinary diagnostic lab like this is the only asset in any state in the country that can actually confirm what we call a zoonotic disease, which is a disease transmitted from animals to people, um, which the COVID-19 virus that we're, we're battling now is, is in that, that class of disease. So when we diagnose uh, any of these zoonotic diseases, we report them not only to our state veterinarian, but also to the Kentucky Department of Health. And we have a very, very close working relationship because they want to be aware of things that we're seeing that could be transmitted to people. And they, they have their own surveillance systems and we have ours. And then when we bring those together, then we can see if possibly there's a cluster of animal diseases that might be overflowing into uh, into the human population. 
So with that, uh, I'm just so happy you're here and, and, and it's always a great opportunity for us to be able to let, uh, let the world know the broad-based mission that we have here and, and all the things that we, we do and, and outreach and, and working with other agencies in the state. And, and now I'm going to turn you over to uh, Dr. Yanita Bryant. Um, who is going to uh, give, give you your tour. She is a veterinary pathologist here, has been here uh, many years, is or did her residency here, and uh, she, she really knows this place inside and out. So I know that she's going to really uh, be a, a fun tour guide for you. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the University of Kentucky Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. I will be your tour guide this morning. Um, I am going to take you around the lab and show you some of our various uh, laboratory sections and, um, and kind of elaborate on what our labs actually do within our huge lab. Um, but again, my name is Dr. Unita Bryan. I am one of the anatomic veterinary pathologists here at the lab. And just to talk a little bit about our pathology section, our section actually is comprised of six full-time veterinary uh, pathologists. Um, our focus of our section is to determine the cause of disease in any particular submitted case, okay? Our case materials predominantly comprise of post-mortem examinations or tissues submitted from clinical cases in the form of biopsies or cytologies. Um, our caseload is approximately 6,000 submissions per year, so we are extremely busy here. Um, but given some of the diseases um, that we have, we have herd health implications. Information from our final diagnostic report will often provide the veterinarian or producer information that can be used to treat other sick animals. So it's a very important section, um, and um, we definitely stay busy. And a section that we work very closely with is actually necropsy. Um, right now, we're actually within our sample prep room. Um, which our, our ladies in diagnostic services will actually process samples here as they come out of the necropsy room, which we will be looking at in just a second. On the other side of this is actually um, a section where the histology technicians will actually sample our formalin fixed tissues that they receive from the pathologists off of the necropsy floor. So next we'll talk about necropsy. Okay, here we have our necropsy suite, which we are actually taking some shots from the outside of the suite due to um, uh, the pandemic and, and just us not being able to be down there right now. Um, but the necropsy section performs post-mortem examinations of animals to determine the cause of death of these animals. Examination and testing of deceased animals provides producers, animal owners, and veterinarians with not only an understanding of the cause of death, but also potential identification of pathogens and or management problems that may be of particular significance in herd health and multi-pet households and may potentially have implications in the health of humans sharing the same environment. The necropsy section works with the UK video pathology section to ensure gross necropsy and ancillary samples are performed, collected, and submitted appropriately for further testing. In 2019, we actually received 3,264 animals for postmortem examination. So that can kind of give you a good idea of exactly how busy this section is. Okay, so now we're, we're on the other side of the sample prep lab where our histology technicians will actually have um, stations. We currently have three histology technicians. So once we get um, samples that come from the necropsy floor that are formalin fixed, the histology te um, technicians will actually um, situate themselves at one of these stations and actually trim in the formalin fixed tissues and send those tissues for processing back in the histology lab and they will actually make glass slides for the pathologist to review these slides under the microscope, okay? In addition to necropsy cases, they also trim in biopsy cases, so surgical biopsies that are obtained from various um, um, clinics around the area as well as out of state. Um, so basically the histology section provides support to the pathologist by processing surgical biopsy and necropsy tissues. 
The process begins with preserved organs and ultimately concludes with the production of a, of a tissue slide that we review under the microscope. So it's a very, very important section. Without them, we could not do what we do. So right now, we are actually outside the serology laboratory. Um, as you can see, they have lots of chicken pictures on their door. They do a lot of chicken work, okay? A lot of, a lot of serology work on chickens for the MPIP program. But basically, they perform clinical and diagnostic regulatory testing on many different species of animals, large and small, to aid practicing veterinarians in arriving at a definitive diagnosis and in early treatment of diseases. So this testing also enables the movement of animals to markets, shows, and breeding. This is a very, very busy section. Actually, they receive about 150,000 individual tests annually and they also work closely with the state and national animal health partners. Yeah. All right, now we are in um, one of the sections of our bacteriology lab, laboratory. Um, the BACT lab actually performs isolation and identification of potentially pathogenic bacteria and fungi from livestock, companion, and other animals. The section performs susceptibility testing or on isolates for the treatment of specific pathogens to safeguard the health of animals in Kentucky and beyond. So some of the tests that they run here actually participates within the federal and state um, contagious equine metritis regulatory program um, in equines, as well as um, the salmonella cultures for the National Poultry Improvement Plan, the MPIP. Um, behind me actually is a piece of equipment here, which is the the Maldi Toff Biotyper. Um, it is a cutting edge instrument for the quick identification of microorganisms, saving up to a full day wait for our clients here. So this equipment has significantly improved the turnaround time for identifying many bacteria. We're, we're unable to go into the molecular diagnostic lab, but what I want to do is actually talk about the molecular diagnostic lab at this point, which um, its primary mission is to provide molecular diagnostic services for the clinical specimens submitted by animal owners, veterinarians, and pathologists from the necropsy floor. Um, a number of molecular assays in the formats of gel-based PCR, real-time PCR, or multiplex PCR are performed within the molecular biology uh, laboratory due to their high speed specificity and sensitivity. Okay, this section actually also analyzes specimens from the virology and the bacteriology laboratories to confirm initial diagnoses. Okay, we are outside of the clinical pathology laboratory and this section provides serum biochemistry, hematology, urinalysis, fecal parasite examinations, endocrinology testing, and other miscellaneous testing to veterinarians and the agriculture community. This section also provides support and cytology preparation for UK video pathologists as well as testing related for the necropsy cases that are submitted. And just across the hall here, we have our epidemiology department, um, whose primary mission is to provide animal disease surveillance and assist veterinarians in the investigation of highly pathogenic, unusual, and emerging disease problems. Daily monitoring of finalized necropsy and lab testing data streams provide near real-time disease monitoring and disease cluster analysis. The section also conducts data acquisition and statistical analysis in support of the Office of the State Veterinarian, USDA, and to provide animal health situational awareness for industry stakeholders. Okay, so now we are actually within our toxicology uh, laboratory, and I'm actually standing beside a distillation apparatus that is actively uh, doing some distillation. <laughs> Um, but this department actually provides toxicologic diagnostic testing capabilities and consultations to Kentucky veterinarians, UK VDL pathologists, county extension agents, livestock producers, pet owners, state officials, and others that are in need of the services of this lab. 
A large variety of the toxicological tests are available, including analysis for metals and minerals, organic compounds, including a multitude of pesticides, drugs, and other chemicals, biological toxicants such as plant, plants, insects, bacterial and fungal toxins, and numerous other toxicants. Tests are performed in tissues, gastrointestinal contents, biological fluids, uh, baits, feeds, forages, water, soil, and many other substances. So yes, this is a very busy um, um, laboratory with lots of cool toys, and we are definitely fortunate to have this uh, department within our laboratory. All right, we are actually within one of our swing labs of the virology uh, department. Um, which uses a variety of tests to identify and detect viruses that can affect animal health, as well as detect an immune response to viral exposure due to acute and chronic infections or vaccinations. So the virology department provides both diagnostic and regulatory testing for horses going to sales and exporting. So that, I mean, pretty much sums up our diagnostic lab. We. Um, we have gone through all the different laboratories and shared with you just a pinch of things that we actually provide within our laboratories. And we hope that you have enjoyed this tour of our diagnostic lab.